It's always better to warm up in situations that are as close as possible to actual gameplay. But Valorant doesn't have custom content, so we can't really set that up. There's no deathmatch, there's no retakes. All we got are robots, blank targets, and spike rush. Oh no. How can we make best use of the practice range to get you prepared to own some noobs? Greetings, hi, the War Owl greets you. This is how to warm up in Valorant. It's important to warm up before every play session, otherwise your first game is your warm up and you're gonna suck. This isn't one size fits all, you have to learn what works for you and do it consistently. If you game for extended periods of time over years and years and years, you need to worry about carpal tunnel syndrome and dying alone. But let's talk about carpal tunnel syndrome. Consult with the physician before doing anything that War Owl says. Please don't sue me because you're an idiot. War Owl is just some guy on the internet and should be treated as such. So anyway, here's some exercises you can do for carpal tunnel syndrome before you game. The first, hold your hand palm up like you're serving a platter and then stretch your hand down that way so you're stretching your wrist a little bit. Hold that for like 15 seconds on both arms. Then. Do it the same way, but palm down and stretch this way. Hold that for 15 seconds. Finally, put your hands together like this and push until... Okay, I made that one up. Click play, practice, shooting test, enter range. If you click practice, it spawns a bunch of dudes. If you press F3, you get a menu. Remember, as close as possible to real gameplay, turn bot armor on. You may be tempted to turn bot armor off so you can always get that one tap, but this isn't about making you feel good about yourself. This is about getting you warmed up to compete. You can make the bots run around, but that's not how the people do. You have to practice against real players' movement, but again, no deathmatch, so... You can't. Warm up with the weapons that you are going to use the most. So I use the Ghost, the Phantom, the Vandal, and the Operator the most. I'm pretty much gonna use these at least once every game. If you're pressed for time and you only have a few minutes to warm up, then pick either the Phantom or the Vandal and just warm up with that one. The first thing I like to warm up is just raw aim. So standing still and flicking. Now I know that they have this speed warm up method. I don't really like this one. Like this one just will like spawn a guy and then you can flick to him and shoot him but I don't like this because it kind of forces you to go at this speed. You can't stop and think about it or go at your own speed. It's focused on the score line. So what I like to do is do eliminate 100, start. And uh, this is pretty much just, you shoot a guy and a new guy spawns somewhere else. And just ignore this. This isn't about score, right? This does not matter at all. You're focused on warming up. This is just a tool to help get the blood flowing and help get you ready to wreck some noobs. So what I like to do at this stage is just practice clicking on its head. So I aim a little bit away from it and then flick to it, right? And you can go from different sides. You can even just do like tap shooting to see if you're gonna hit the tap shot. So that hit the tap shot, right? And keep track if you're messing up. This is important. And this is why I like that you can slow this down and kind of go at your own speed. If I'm consistently going past the target like that, that's a bad habit. And I can then slow it down and try to figure out, oh, I went by it a little bit, right? Oh, oh, maybe I should focus on it or slow it down, slow down my movement a little bit and train it a little bit better until I can start taking them out. I just do this until you feel comfortable with hitting your shots. The next thing I like to do is incorporate movement into it. So I'm moving back and forth and I'm gonna practice counter strafing and stopping or just stopping total, practice your duck. Any kind of movement you wanna to add to it, maybe even just do the, the one taps to make sure you're hitting the one tap as you stop movement. Now, if you are missing and if you are messing up your movement and you can't really tell what you're doing wrong, you could go into crosshair, scroll down to outer lines, turn on the opacity and make sure movement error and firing error are on and then you can see these like weird little lines in the center. I don't know if that shows up on the video. Um, that is your movement inaccuracy. So as you're moving, you can see when it's not accurate and you can see when it is accurate, it goes to the center. Moving a little bit, that's accurate. That's not accurate here, right? So you can get a, an idea of it. This is like training wheels. I wouldn't leave these on when you play unless you're like a completely new player and you're just getting used to it or you're transitioning from another game. I had to use these coming over from Counter-Strike for a while. Uh, but after a while, after you get used to the movement, you really should take these off and go back to just like a standard crosshair. You can do a dot crosshair, whatever kind of crosshair you want. But take off the dynamic crosshair after you get a good idea about how the movement works, right? So do that. 
for like 50 to 100 kills until you feel confident with each of the weapons. And when you're using a semi-automatic weapon like the Ghost, try to get into the habit of tapping as fast as you can and moving while still hitting accurate shots. Because that's how you're going to be using it. You're not, unless he's close up like this, that I would spam right there. But if he's further away, I'll try to get one to spawn further away. There. I'm not going to just spam that. I'm going to do this kind of a thing and just get like the two tap on him. And you can shoot this pretty fast accurately. One thing that's missing are peak walls. It'd be nice to have a wall that I can kind of strafe behind and strafe in front of to practice shooting. But they don't have that here, so I have to come back over here to this wall. So let's say I want to practice peeking with the op, right? You can do that and get a shot there. And now a new one has spawned. I don't know where he is, so I can practice kind of like clearing slowly. Oh, there he is, you know? You can do all kinds of stuff like that, like... Hey, there's, there's practice. There's ways you can you can hack the system. Also, you can go here. I don't know if you knew that. You can come out here and be like, hey, what's up, buddy? How's it going? Hazam. You also want to warm up your spray control and your spray transfer. So here's how you can do that. Spray control is pretty obvious. You just do it right here. I put it at 20 meters and just try to get the grouping as tight as possible, you know? You can also just kind of look at what the spray pattern looks like and just try to control it or even practice on this guy and just be like, how many headshots can I get? How many headshots can I get in just one spray, right? For spray transfer, you can come over here and hit practice, and now you got a million guys running around here. So pick two of them. Like, I'm going to pick that guy and that guy. So I'm going to shoot this. I'm going to start here, shoot this guy first, and then transfer to him. Right? And practice that way. You can even, like... I mean, there's too many. Look how many of these guys are. You just... Ah! All right. So now you're warmed up. You're ready to go. You're ready to kick some ass. Don't let the warm up session go for too long. Don't let it go over 15 minutes. You should be shooting for like 10 minutes. It's just to get the blood flowing. It's to get too warmed up. It's to get past the initial like, oh, I actually forgot how to play this game stages. And you'll be surprised. Do this every time you play consistently and you will be amazed at how much better you play and how much you improve in the long run. Uh, if you still aren't fe feeling confident though after practicing, you could play a casual game mode and just focus on getting kills before hopping into competitive as well. After developing this warm-up routine, I ranked up twice in five games. So it has to work. This is my first Valorant guide. I don't know if there's a need for them. I'm just experimenting with content right now. We'll see what works and what doesn't. It's really tough to create Valorant content when they don't even have a replay viewer. Thanks for watching. I'm the War Owl, and I still have no closer. I freaking mouse wheel!